Hey everybody, Jim Malone here, coming to you live on Dallas Trading Floor. It is Thursday. Well, <laughs> it looks as if the market, especially the Dow Jones, is pulling back. We had a little proposal, uh, tax hike proposal by the Biden administration, and very predictably, the the uh, the market basically took it in the short. So it's moving, it's moving lower. You know why is that? Why is that not a mystery? Um, anyways, I'm trying. I'm. I should be cynical. It's that's not. That's not polite to be cynical, but it just seems so predictable. Anyways, the the Dow Jones is pulling back today. Um, the Nasdaq uh, is holding on a little bit, but it's still it's still kind of on the edge. But this uh, capital gains uh, proposal is, you know, it's 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 going to be. It's going to take, uh, you know, if it, if it takes hold, which I don't think it will, but we'll see. Uh, it will definitely let the let the uh, air out of a lot of tires, uh, <laughs> I'm afraid, and so we might be in a shorting mood. And I and and uh, with the uh, Discord group, uh, I have been trying to put out some some ideas uh, out there uh, to kind of uh, you know use the bear spreads to kind of. Uh, you know, take advantage of that because you can make market in a declining market. You can make money in a declining market. It's definitely not there yet, but you know, this uh, this this tax proposal probably will will do some damage. But we'll see. Uh, we'll we'll see how we'll see how it is. But anyways, the Dow Jones is lower on that. Um, but t let's take a look at the Nasdaq. So to see how it's trading. Um, it's down a little bit, not as much. Uh, it's Thankfully, it's still above the 50-day uh, line, which is good. Uh, but uh, again, the Dow Jones is off the most. It's still above 3,300, so it's a 33,811.07. Uh, <clears throat> so that's still pretty good. But uh, definitely, some of the Dow stocks that have been getting some love, uh, you know, are not getting quite as much love <laughs> with this, with this potential, uh, you know, with this, with 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 this. So you have to kind of, you know, take the good with the bad and. Uh, you know we're down a little bit today, and I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but uh, we are down a little bit today. Uh, also, uh, wanted to kind of uh, show you a, a little bit a better chart of the Nasdaq. Again, you can see we're we're still above the 50-day moving average, which is a good thing, uh, but we're we're starting to pull back. Uh, it seems like we have a resistance at about the $14,000, 14,000, excuse me, $13,000, 14,000 level. We seem to have some resistance there. Uh, we're off ninety-two dollars fifty-seven cents, uh, about a little less, almost uh, a little more than a half a percent. Not not a huge amount, but we're definitely pulling back. Uh, so hopefully we, uh, you know, hopefully we'll revert back to the mean and it will continue upwards. But you know, definitely uh, the market is looks like it may be getting to the point where we have to consider it possibly <coughs> topping. And uh, I also want to go through the margin debt here as I did yesterday kind of to show that <coughs> I have a bear put spread <coughs> on earnings for American Airlines Group basically I purchased uh, the 20 puts the May uh, I guess the May 18th 20 puts uh, and they're in the money when of course when it reaches 20 um, you know who knows how they're going to report uh, but my ex my expectation is that there will be continued weakness in this area, United Airlines dropped uh, when they reported, and so did um, Delta. Most of the big international airlines, the American-based international airlines, are ha going to have problems, unfortunately, going forward. I don't think it's going to be as robust. This reopening is, is not going to probably work as well, uh, you know, because a lot of business travel just is going to be by Zoom, to be honest with you. Uh, leisure travel is probably going to come back a little bit faster, but... Uh, but corporate and international travel probably are not very good areas for the for the for the market. So I think that uh, my guess is, and you know who knows? I mean, I could be totally wet on this, but I think that probably uh, American Airlines uh, um, announces after the bell, and I suspect they'll probably be off. So uh, we'll see how it does. If it pulls below 20, then I think we're you know going to be in a situation where we make a little bit of money. Um, by the way, you know these spreads. I I try to put these spreads out on the Discord. Uh, room and if you're interested in that, um, you know, if, if you're interested in taking a look at that, it is it is available. And uh, let me just kind of put up here, kind of how you would find out more about that. It's at www.vinnyvhinny.com slash u slash Dallas Trading Floor. So if you're more, if you're interested in the Discord room where we do uh, you know, we do talk about some of these um, 
these, 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 some of these, these spreads, uh, you know, we put all the information out. It's available basically at this uh, address. So www.vidi.com slash u slash Dallas Trading Floor. So let's take a look at um, what I'm currently holding. I've been pulled out. I've been um, pushed out of a lot of stocks. Um, basically, I'm currently in lows. I, I continue to be in lows. It's done quite well for me. I'm just holding on, just pushing up that stop loss. Hasn't pulled back yet. Uh, floor uh, in that. It's up a little bit today. Um, I think we are going to get some infrastructure spins. So I do believe that we're going to see a, a reallocation of some of the big Dow stocks into more of the construction infrastructure type plays. Um, I'm, I'm trying to look at uh, FCX, uh, Freeport, Back Moran as possible to play because they're going to come up in earnings um, basically next week. Uh, Microsoft is uh, off significantly. As you said, there's been weakness in the NASDAQ. And of course, the one of the biggest components of the NASDAQ is is Microsoft. And the Qs are uh, probably down as well uh, with that. Uh, also, uh, just uh, to give you the, my, if, if you're on TikTok uh, and you want to see the charts, it's super easy to do. You can jump on over to the YouTube uh, channel by going to my profile, hitting the link, and then uh, scrolling down and you'll see the current, uh, you know, the, the the current show that we're broadcasting right now, and of course, it'll be archived right after the show. So if you're interested in, you know, reviewing some of the stocks and you know, kind of flipping through some of those things. Um, anyways, uh, but uh, basically, let's get into some of the uh, questions. Let's see on the comments. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put up. Uh, let's look at some TikTok. Let's see if I can get. Uh, let's see if I can get that going. You know, let's take a second here. Okay, great. Got a little bit of a little bit of a freeze here. I think. Uh, yeah, there we go. We're back. Okay, so let's look if anyone is looking in on TikTok. Um, what do you think on CCL? That's Carnival Cruise Lines, of course. And uh, we're still frozen on the screen, so maybe I can get that. There we go. So if we can, we can we can get that. So let's. Oh, I'm still frozen on the screen. So hopefully I can. Uh, oh. Goodness, uh, <laughs> it seems to have frozen me out. So that seems to be the issue here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit this app. I think this is part of the, causing part of the problem. See if I can do it just directly from from there. So um, <clears throat> uh, let's look at Carnival Cruise Lines and then look at that next. See if I can pull that up right now on Carnival on my charts. Um, as you know, the the uh, le travel and leisure group is you know the, the other shoe is finally hitting, and I think uh, with some of that there's going to be some issues related to this area. Um, but I do think uh, you know we do have some issues related to this area. But I want to take a look at Carnival. Let's uh, let's pull this up on the screen now. Of course, if you're if you're if you're looking on uh, YouTube, you're going to see the screen, of course. But if you're on um, <clears throat> if you, if you're if you're on TikTok, unfortunately, I can't broadcast this on the screen. It's just uh, unfortunate that I can't do that yet, but hopefully I will be able to do that. If you want to see this chart easy to do, just go to my profile, hit the link, and you'll be taken right over to uh, to the charts that we're that we're looking at for Carnival. Here's the thing about Carnival. Uh, it uh, still it's it, it has rallied above the 50 day line and it looks like it's off a little bit today, about 33 cents at uh, $27. Uh, it is there is it is above a potential buy point, but I just I I'm I am not uh, I'm not that psyched on on the strength in this group. I, I I still think that you have to be extremely careful because if it doesn't hold on to the 50-day line, it's probably going to go lower. That's my guess on Carnival. Uh, we have uh, de uh, we do have some selling volume coming in, so it does have a, it does have a um, uh, it does have a relative strength of 89, which is very very good. Uh, the checklist is good as well, 66%. But I just think with the with the with the uh, the the, um, the the earning situation on this, I think you got to be really careful. Uh, this will probably be they've uh, th this is they've gone through earnings and uh, they're down. Their revenue is down. Uh, sales are down 99%. It's just been awful for this stock. Uh, basically, uh, a year ago uh, they lost uh, eight, uh, say 85% in revenue. Um, the, the quarter after that, 100%. Uh, this quarter, 99%. This is basically a dead man walking. So I don't think you really want to be in this stock. 
uh, it's just, uh, I, I think there's, there's just better places to be right now than in Carnival. So not something you want to be, you want to be in. All right. So hopefully I'm going I'm, to, I'm having a little issues again with bandwidth and it seems like we're freezing up. There we go. Thoughts on DKS. I still don't have the, the, the audio. So let me see if I can get the camera back here and see if we can do that. So I'm going to stop the cam and then pull that back doesn't like one doesn't for some reason want to let me do that so let's see if I can redo that uh, let's see if I can change out some of the things there hmm. it is it's freezing up and I don't understand why this is the case and I've got a standard resolution on the lowest resolution that I could go so let's see if we can get a I'm gonna go to low res and unfortunately we're getting some just issues here there we go well, maybe go high res. Okay, so let's see if we can. Let's see if it'll, it'll come back. I don't have camera, and let's see if we can get camera back. Okay, there we go, <laughs> everybody. Thanks for holding on for me uh, while I got my camera sorted out. Um, DKS is the symbol. DKS, and that's Dick Sportico. This has been a great performer, by the way. Uh, thanks so much drunk squidward uh this has been a great performer uh it's up 35 cents a day this is definitely the kind of thing you want to be looking for uh the retail sector has been doing very very well uh the group retail leisure products is 27 out of 197 so it's looking very strong uh, in terms of that uh, the, it's got a hundred percent checklist uh the industry group rank is excellent uh, we've got lots of funds in it it's just altogether good. Um, it, it's just an altogether good uh, stock here. Uh, nice, it, you know, as opposed to Carnival Cruise Lines, which is losing money, their 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 sales just keep keep going up. So uh, definitely, I, if you're in this one, you know, you want to stay in this one because this this one this one is setting up very very nicely. It doesn't. There's not a really great buy point on this one, but uh, I, I would be I'd probably be a buyer of this above. 81.12. It's currently at 84.71. I think it's buyable. Uh, it's it's right about on the 10-day line. Um, it's not a great buy point, but the relative strength line is pointing up. Uh, uh, 90 is relative strength, so it's looking very very strong. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods, DKS. So looking very very good on that and uh, very good choice. Uh, so if you're in that, you know you might want to possibly look at that. Okay, uh, this is a question from. TikTok, uh, I have a Disney 85 call for June 18th that was down uh, a 10%. Should I sell? Let's look at the chart for Disney. This is a question from TikTok. Uh, I'm going to put up the, I, I can't put up the, the chart on TikTok, but it's available on YouTube that I'm running it right now. If you go over to the website at, uh, <clears throat> and the way that we do that is just go to my profile, hit that link. And scroll down, and, and, and you can see the, the live broadcast on YouTube. Um, okay, so let's kind of analyze Disney. Of course, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the Dow got slammed today because of the tax proposal in the Biden administration. And I, don't, I think that, you know, we're definitely going to see an increase in, in taxes uh, from the Biden administration. Uh, at this point, one of the things is, I don't think... I'm trying to see if 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 a call would be the right thing to do with here. Um, I I think that it looks as if it probably it's in a downward trend. Here's the thing: I probably would, if this was a call, this is me. I would probably close it because it looks as if there is a downward trend, and so the call is probably going to depreciate in value. And as and the closer that we get to uh expiration the worse it's going to get so my 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 uh, opinion on this one is probably to close it and you know it, it i know it's it's never fun taking a loss but uh you know it's just one of those things so the 185 call um you know i i think that we're below the 21 day after i i would i would close this one take the 10 percent loss I know this is not fun to do. This is one of the reasons I do spreads because it, you know, when you get into this situation, it kind of limits to some of the problems there. But I, I think that you got to possibly, you know, and it, it sucks, but I think you probably should close it. That would be what I would uh, I would do uh, if this. Oh, just made 20 grand. Okay, excellent. Thoughts on coin? And this is also a question coming from TikTok. 
Uh, let's look at Coinbase. You know, here's the thing about Coin. Uh, I did trade it basically in the first few hours of its of its being out there. I I bought it at um, uh, I bought it at 400. And I let it ride up to 420, and then I bailed. Um, uh, in, and and yeah, I just think it's right now. You're going to have to wait for it to let let it form a base. I'm not anti Coinbase. I'm just I'm just kind of watching it drop. And seeing if it if it if it uh, gets some stability. Currently, it's trading at uh, 292.08, and originally it uh, it IPO'd at uh, 250. It seems like there's some selling activity going on. Let's see if it forms an IPO base, um, but uh, definitely keep it on your watch list because I think Coin, you know, has you know ha I mean I mean uh, you know I don't think uh, I don't think uh bitcoin is um I, I mean i don't think that uh crypto is going away so here's what i would do watch list um so so uh so watch list um coin uh and uh, for 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 now um you know that's really that's really what i think that it would be your best your best bet at this point um i think it's going to firm up and possibly Give us an opportunity, but right now, uh, with Coinbase, we just don't really have an opportunity for entry here. This is not a good chart um, to be entering on. We want to see it firm up. We want to see it move above, uh, right to about the 350 range. If it can move up, move up to about 350, form a nice cup, then we possibly could get back in. But right now, I think you got to be super duper careful, uh, you know, because this one may or may not return to where it, to where it was. So we got to be careful. Uh, hey Jim, M A X R is about to break out. Uh, is there a better semiconductor play? Good question. Let's look at. Uh, I think this is, is this Max Store. Yeah, M A X R, M A X R. Let's look at the semis. Uh, this is a great. Yeah, you know Max R, not Max Store, Max R. And it says provides operational solutions. Max, is that right? M A X R. Um, I don't think this is a breakout. I mean, it's pulled above the 21-day line, and it's up 81 cents. But I, I can't. I, this is not a breakout. Yeah, no, no, this is not a breakout. If let's let's take a look at the semis to see kind of if there's something in the semis that we can get. Most of the most of the action right now right has been uh, recently has been in um, not not so much in the semis, but in the semiconductor equipment manufacturers. That's sort of been where it is. Maxar is a defense contractor, so it's it's a little bit uh, you know it's a little bit different. So let's let's kind of let's kind of look in at the semis and see. Uh, let's look at. I'm just gonna. I'm pulling. I'm pulling up the semis as we speak. Uh, let's see. Okay, semiconductor contract manufacturers. Uh, Huh. Yeah. Okay. Semiconductor manufacturers. Um, okay. Let's let's look at the semi group. Um, yeah. Okay. Here we go. So so let me so let me put this up for everyone here. This is the actual. This is the semiconductor group. Uh, in general, as you can see, we've we've been you know we've pulled back down below the 50-day moving average. This is the group in general. Uh, we are having, you know, we we are having a little bit of trouble holding it there, but the relative strength line is fairly good. So let's see kind of what stocks we can look at in here. Of course, there's Taiwan Semi, there's Intel. Now I have a bear trade on Intel for tomorrow, and uh, that's one we might want to look at. Texas Instruments, of course. These this is by market cap. The biggest, of course, is TSM. That's Taiwan Semi. Uh, then you've got Intel, Texas Instruments, and then analog devices, uh, and microchip, and and so forth. Um, Corvo, of course, is in there. I'm, I have a position in Corvo as well, uh, and on semiconductor. Now, in terms of the semis, I believe that the best one, at least for right now, at least the way it's showing, is on semiconductor. It's based in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, and it has looked like it has tested the. Uh, it looks like it tested the the 50-day line, so that one looks pretty decent. I want to. Um, it's got a 98 relative strength and an upper trend on its relative strength. The checklist is 66%, and it has very good ownership by funds. 1164 funds are in it. Um, if if I was looking in this space, and currently I'm looking 
to do bear trades in the in this space, but if I was looking to do a bull trade, this is where be where I where I would go. I want to kind of show you the chart for uh, Intel. They and they uh, they um, uh, they they announce uh, earnings today after the bell, so we're going to see how it how it trades on Monday. Uh, but it's been pulling back, and I think uh, you know, depending on how it goes, I think we could see it move lower um, on earnings. I don't think earnings are going to be stellar for Intel. They're sort of re restructuring their business plan. Uh, they're going to move to a model that's similar to uh, TSM on uh, on on fabulous. Uh, I mean, uh, making fab making chips for other companies. It's uh, if 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 we see if if we see a negative result this time, uh, this is likely to be the third quarter that the sales have been down, and basically the earnings have been flat. So we'll can see if they can turn it around. Um, I may close this one before the bell. I'm not sure. Let me. T uh, I may close this one before the bell, but I, I I'm probably going to hold this through the bell. I do think it. I think it's going to move lower. Uh, at least that's my that's my opinion of it. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, we, we'll we'll see what's what's going to happen here. Uh, you know, we'll see how we'll see if the results are are good or not. But I, I don't think it's it it might reverse, but uh, probably not. So. We'll see. We'll see how that one trades um, um, after earnings today. All right. So thanks for take. Thanks for that. PayPal. Let's look at PayPal. Thanks uh, um, for that one. Uh, PayPal really is uh, along with Square. Uh, this is really the new kind of world when it comes to um, you know, payments. I mean, they're 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 uh, getting into the Bitcoin area, allowing it for payments and. Uh, it it it, uh, it does have a cup with handle um, uh, chart for right now, so that's very interesting. There is a buy point on on PayPal right now, uh, and the buy point on this is third. It's a third stage, is two seventy seven, two seventy seven sixty five. So uh, right now it's two se two two sixty one. So it's below the buy point. But if it, if, it, if we can get a nice bounce off of the 50-day line, then I think we might be in a range to buy this one. This is definitely you should definitely watch this this one right now. Uh, we are getting to the point where this is going to become very viable. The earnings though are in two weeks and 13 days, but this is one that I think you need to put on your wish list. I wouldn't buy this right at this point because we're coming into earnings, but it has a very very nice pattern. Uh, and it's above the 50-day line, and it's above the 200-day line, and it looks like it's lining up very nicely. So, this is one that I believe that you should watch. This I don't, I wouldn't buy this right now. It's, it's tough right now to buy anything. It just, you know, there's a lot, there's a fair amount of uncertainty in the market. Um, but what I would do for this one is, uh, you know, I would wait for earnings in 13 days, and that's kind of what. You know that's kind of how I would be playing. Um, that's kind of how I would be playing PayPal. Wait for those earnings because we're in. We've got a very nice cup with handle pattern, and it's a strong stock. And uh, I, I think that you could definitely do well. But I wouldn't be buying it right at this moment because it, it is coming into earnings, and you know it's it is at a point where we need to to be careful on it. All right, we have a question on NMM from Matt. Thank you, Matt. Uh, let's see, that's uh, in MM. I wonder, yeah, okay, uh, Novus Marine Partners. Okay, well, boy, that's doing great. You're definitely picking out a section that's working well. The, the um, it's, it's interesting, the dry bulk carriers have been doing really, really good. Uh, this one's a $29 stock. It's up 62 cents today. Just amazing. Um, relative strength of 98. I want to look at another one. It was a recent IPO. It's the Israeli National Shipping Company, and the symbol on this one is Zim, Z-I-M. This one I, I like as well. It's a, it, it's a little bit extended from its buy point, unfortunately. The buy point was here at 22, uh, 22.58, and it's, it's extended up from that. But this group in general is doing very, very well, the Marine Transport Group. Uh, it's number three on the list right now. So I kind of want to kind of go through some of the some of the uh, some of the stocks that are in this particular group because it's so interesting that this would be doing so well. I don't I don't think I've ever seen a time when um, you know when when uh, 
the stocks were doing so well in this in, in this area. There is another there is another option. It's called Matson Lines. It's based in Honolulu, Hawaii, and that is doing very very well as well as as, as Jim Sipic. So I kind of want to take a look at that one. It pulls a little bit below its uh, it, it the 50 day line, uh, but this group in general is is doing extremely well. So very interesting stock uh, that you have and. Uh, you know, I don't really know how to play it because I'm not really an expert in the group, but uh, it, it's a very interesting one. I think it's very good. Let's look at Beyond Meat. I think it's B Y N B Y N D. I think it is Beyond Meat. No, B Y. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that's wrong. B Y N D. There we go. Beyond Meat. Perfect. Okay. This is the chart for Beyond Meat. It's still, I, you know, this is this this stock is a little bit in trouble since last year. It's it's pulled below the 200-day line. Not a place I would want to be buying it. It just, uh, you know, I don't want to be in anything that's below this 200-day line. And and that right here is uh, just so I could show you is this this black line here. This is the 200-day moving average. You really don't want to buy anything that's that's pulled below this because this means that. The money is flowing out. It's kind of like when you see the tide going out. That's the case here. So uh, I, I would I would not recommend uh, Beyond Meat. Uh, you know I, I just I don't think that uh, that Beyond is going to give you. Um, it, it, it's I don't think it's going to give you a very good result. Hopefully I'll get uh, hopefully I'll get my cursor back here. Yeah, there we go. So I, I think you've got to uh, you know to to avoid Beyond Meat. Um, you know, altogether. I, I, I think you I think you just do. Because beyond uh, BYND, Beyond Meat, I, I, it's pulling below the 200 day average. It's just not looking good. Uh, the checklist is, is not good. Uh, the options are showing. Yeah, OK. The options are showing that that, uh, you know, the puts are appreciating and the calls are <laughs> depreciating. Now, this thing is going lower, I'm afraid. So beyond me, I think you have to be a bit, a little, a little bit more careful. Uh, I wouldn't buy it if I was in it and I was down. I think that you know I might be considering cutting some of my losses at this point. I just, uh, I don't think it looks good. Um, let's see, uh, Qdel, is it ba too bad to trade? Well, probably. Um, it's just a much harder market right now to trade than it was last year, uh, just because. Because of things. So this is a diagnostic uh, test company. Um, I think it's based in Austin, if I'm not mistaken, Austin, Texas. Uh, it has a downward trending chart and it's below the 200-day uh, line. So I think you got to. I think you got to avoid it. I, I think you have, really have to avoid that one. I don't. Still, I don't think it's going to give you the kind of thing that you're going to want. Thoughts on U uh, Unity and a firm start? Let's see, look at Unity first. Unity is a company, the software company that is the sort of has a software for developing games. Um, it, it has been showing a little bit of strength uh, as of late, but it's still really bad in terms of its chart pattern. As you can see, it was very people were very excited about it. Let's look at the weekly chart. And it came out, and then boom, it went up, and then boom, it went down. So, um, do I think do, would I would I buy this one? Well, probably not. It's uh, 19 days. It doesn't look good for this one. So I I wouldn't be in this one, even though. We do have increasing sales, which is which is which is typically a good thing, but the market just is having a bad reaction right now in this area. So I think you probably want to avoid it. Um, maybe 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 um, maybe watch list it, but uh, I I probably would avoid this one. Uh, PayPal. I think I went over PayPal before. I think it's a very good stock. Let's look at XM Radio. That's of course the network, and for for a long time. This was a non-penny stock's penny stock. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I got I gave you the wrong thing. Provo, Utah. Okay, so I don't know about this one. This is a relatively thinly traded stock. It looks to me computer software enterprise, not the best group at this moment. Um, and I'm looking at the weekly chart here. Let's look at the daily. It it is pretty much of an IPO. Um, and it looks and it has spiked up, and I have no idea why that is the case. I wonder if there was an acquisition rumor or something. I cannot tell why this is spiked up, but the checklist is not bad. 55% ownership is it's 156, so pretty good. I can't, I don't really have a good answer for this one, uh, but uh, it's a, it's in a good group. 
All right, let's take a look at uh, okay. Um, what do you think about the new taxes? Well, I think I think I think they're going to do what they always do. This is a question from Tech Talk. The proposed new taxes on capital gains. It's it's going to kill the stock market. Um, I mean, that's what people. That's what you know. P here's what's going to happen with and and, and uh, this is very predictable. This is very very predictable because. By raising the tax rate on the long-term capital gains right now, what's going to happen is a lot of people are going to say, "Well, why, why, why pay the tax? I'm just going to, I'm going to sell. That's going to depress the stock market." So we're looking at possibly, you know, this is going to be a trigger. Who knows? I mean, it, it, it this could trigger a decline in the stock market. Um, you, we just don't know. We just don't know. But it, it's not, it's not a good sign. Um, it's, it's not a good sign. Um, you know. The, the, you know, they're going to probably trigger a, a, a sell-off in the market. So I'm preparing myself. I'm getting more into cash, and I'm looking to possibly take bear positions rather than bull positions. And I'm doing a lot of spreads because that uh, defines my risk. So I, I, I think it has, a, as an external factor, I think it has a very dire uh, thing. But you know, that's what they're going to pursue because the, the user ba the, uh, you know, there's they want to there, there is a there is a t hunger. Um, there's a hunger out there to to do that, so you know for, for political reasons. Let's Kate. Let's look at the VXX to see uh, here VXX, and of course that is the the VIX. Um, boy, you know this. You know right now we're, we have. By the way, the VIX is not something to be trading right now. Uh, we have limit. We have. Uh, our volatility is going up. I kind of want to show you a chart. Um, you know, I want I want to kind of show you a psychological chart on the VIX. Um, it's very important before you get into any of these ETFs that you know what they're trading. And in this case, this is a um, what they're doing is that they're they're leveraging against the the volatility index. Well, interestingly enough, volatility. Has been dropping in the market, not not increasing. So, this VIX, um, th this this VIX iShares, it's going to be it's going to be moving down. I mean, it absolutely, it's absolutely going to be, it, it's a, it's absolutely going to be moving down. So, let's see if I can give you kind of a, a snapshot of that to show you show you why that is indeed the case. And uh, and this this is a kind of an interesting indicator. This is an indicator on the VIX. And I want to show you the the uh, there we go there we go finally got it to pull up. Um, and okay, this this indicator here shows the 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 chart of the VIX, and as you can see. The, the volatility has been dropping. It's picking up a little bit, but it's been basically dropping. That's why this IPATH um, S&P 500 VIX shares is not a good investment in this in, in this environment because we we have lower volatility. As you can see, it's moving downwards. Um, but there is, there are a number of things that I am concerned about in the market that I kind of want to share with everyone. And uh, and, and one of those areas, and uh, and I talk about this. I've I've talked about this on numerous days. Is the amount of margin debt that's out there now? Hopefully, I'll get my. There we go. We're getting my cursor back. Is the is the amount is 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 the amount of margin debt out there? And I am a little bit concerned with this. This is showing a potential top on. Uh, this this is this is showing a potential top on the market. So, um, I'm going to. Uh, hopefully, I'll get this to. There we go. There we go. I, I have a little bit of again bandwidth issues here, but on the margin debt situation. We are looking at, you know, the last time margin debt was this high was back in 2007. And right now, because of the interest rates and everything like that, margin debt has moved at the beginning, you know, at the beginning of, uh, you know, this year it was, mar it was, it was manageable, but it has just shot up and shot up. And, and, and what this is telling me is that we're very close to eventually a top on the market. And this this is why I am starting to reconfigure my my portfolio to more cash and kind of waiting waiting things out. And the reason is is because of this uh, of this potential explosion in margin debt. The thing about that is, coupled with the tax increase potential from the Biden administration, we're very likely to see the market 
possibly top here. So you want to be very, very careful on that. So would I would I be buying the VXX? Probably not at this point. I mean, it could be a good, if, if the market starts to move uh, downward it uh, very quickly, it might be a good deal. But right now, I, I just, I don't think you want to be in it. Um, but it's a very good question. Now, CLF, Cleveland Cliffs, this, this, they did report, I think they, I think they did okay today. Um, of course, this is a steel company based in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, and it's down a little bit. Yeah, it's about nine, down to 90 cents. Uh, they had really good profits. I mean, their earnings per share were up 775%. And their sales were up uh, 100, uh, 999%, so almost 1,000%. And look, guess what happened? It's still okay. So let's let's switch back to that screen. There we go. And even with that, even with that, it's falling. Can you believe that? That just shows you that how skittish this market is getting. This is why I think we're getting near a top, because um, even with these great numbers on Cleveland Cliffs, um, you know they blew out their numbers. They, their, their, their earnings per share was up 770%, and still their, their stock is falling. So that tells me, that tells me that there are really no good buy points for this one at this moment. Let's see, let's see, let's see what happens. Um, but uh, we, we are in a, we are in a tight pattern. You, you possibly could buy this if it moves above 1877. It's currently 1709. This is a first stage consolidation base. So you could buy it if it moves above about 1877. That's where I would buy it. And and I think I think once people settle down and they look at they look and see that, you know this 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 company is just performing great. Uh, you know once the initial shock wears off, I think this win will go go higher. But let this get let get let it get some strength, let it get some strength at uh, you know at at this consolidation uh, at 1877. So 1877. For Cleveland Cliffs is sort of where I would be, I, I I would be buying it. But you know it's extraordinary because they had such good numbers, and yet their stock fell. But that just shows you kind of what's going on. So the buy point um, for uh, CLF is equal to um, uh, is 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 equal. Oops, is equal to about 1817. Now hopefully I'm getting. Yeah, let me get my, my cursor back here. Uh, 1877. So, uh, oops, come on. Let me. It's it's gonna give me the gonna give me my cursor back here in a second. So hopefully, there we go. Um, is uh, 1877. So if you were to buy, if this if this thing moves higher, uh, it's it's supposed to be four, but the buy point for Cleveland Cliffs is 1877. It's looking pretty decent. Um, let's see if the next, cut. I'm getting a little bit of uh, lag here again, sorry. All right, let's go, and, and you wanted to look at FCX too. FCX, uh, Freeport Macmoran, this is one I think is, I really like this one. Um, I, I, I really like Freeport Macmoran, and I think, uh, you know, they're they're looking very good. Their earnings per share were, were stellar. They were up 400%. I mean, that's that's, that's incredible. Uh, their their stock is off a little bit, but I think it's you're going to see it firm up. And I think a good buy point on this one is 37.61 uh, on this. So I'm going to put that up there. Hopefully, I'm going to get it get the banner to come up here. The buy point on this one uh, is uh, basically. Um, 3461 yeah for um buy point for um FCX is equal to 3761 come on <laughs> FCX is equal to 3761. There we go. All right. So they put that out there for everyone. But the buy point on this one, uh, 3761, and uh, I think this is very, very viable. It, it has a double bottom, a very, very strong pattern. This is one you ought to put on your watch list because I do think, even though they're off a little bit uh, uh, after earnings, they, they just blew out their numbers. 
419% uh, up. So FCX is looking very, very strong. This is the kind of groups that you're going to need to be in. If we have a recession in this country, uh, we're very likely to see a lot of strength in some of the basic industries that, that have that are commodity based. FCX, of course, is a miner. You can't get more basic than that. Uh, so agricultural products, miners, these are all going to do well uh, if we see a return to inflation, which nobody has seen really for 20 years. But if we do that, and if the market tops, I think these are going to be, the, this is the kind of area that you want to start focusing on. Uh, currently, this group, this metal and mining ores, it's 18 out of 197. So it's a very strong group and um, definitely something you want to look at. Uh, and it's very, very good, and it, we've got a buy point on this one. Um, thoughts on fun? <laughs> I keep getting uh, this is a cock from TikTok. You know, uh, you know this this might have been a good one a while ago, uh, but this is just uh, I just don't know. It, it uh, I don't I don't know about uh, about fun. Uh, anyway, Cedar Fair is the name of it, and of course it's a very very thinly traded stock. It's basically an amusement park in in Cleveland, and so I don't really know a whole lot about it. Uh, it doesn't really look stellar when you look at this chart. Um, it's, it's basically pulled back. It's, it's getting some support at the 50-day line, but uh, it's been down, let's see, the sales have been down one, two, three, four quarters, and it's got earnings in 13 days. So I would avoid this one. Um, I just don't think it's going to do very well. Um, it's very thinly, thinly traded. Uh, it's an amusement park, basically, and we just went after hours. It's an amusement park, basically, in Sandusky, Ohio, and uh, I just I don't see it. I just, just don't see this one being hugely. Um, you know, I don't think this one. I don't think you want to mess with this one. I just don't think there's other ones out there that are better uh, than this one. So let's get back to the questions. Hopefully, we'll get it. Will let me. It will let me uh, go here. So. Until then, let's see if we take a question. Oh, Rocket Mortgage, RKT. Nice name. Uh, not the greatest industry, of course. Uh, RKT. Um, and that is Rocket Companies. Um, it, it's trading you know, it's trading relatively well uh, for an IPO. Uh, but it is down. The, really, the buy point on this one is uh, basically at 3250 it's currently at 2186. So you just got to give this one more time. Uh, you know, this this is this is a mortgage company. They do have they do have big market share. So uh, in that way, I think they're a very good company. But I just don't really uh, the chart doesn't excite me at all. Uh, it's a downward trending chart. So I think you want to avoid this rocket mortgage. Sorry about that. Uh, but I, I just think you want to avoid it. Um, is Okay, I'm looking. Thoughts on fun. Um, is there any way? Oh, is there any way uh, I can buy a place with no income, <laughs> but do have the 20% down payment? Absolutely. There's always a way that you can do this, um, and I have done this too. By the way, when I came here to Dallas, it's one of the reasons I moved here from California. This is quite a few years ago. It's 2006. I was able to buy several properties, no money down, but it was a little bit different. I was able to buy it with a with the first trust and then and then borrow the second trust, um, but they don't allow that anymore. So, but you, yes, you can do it. You have to look for owner financing, but right now that's a very tough way to go because uh, the market is 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 very strong for properties right now. I think you know maybe 2022 we'll see a we'll see a pullback. That's when you're going to be able to buy these properties. But right now, uh, it's a hot market. It's going to be very tough to buy anything. With 20% down and no income, it just it just is. I mean, I'll be I'll be I'll be honest with you. Now, if you have 40% down, maybe then they'll talk. But you know, right now that's just going to be a tough order. Unfortunately, I wish it was, but that is I think the way it is. Um, okay, let's look at MCFE. Um, MCFE. McAfee Corporation. You know, <laughs> the guy John McAfee. He's kind of character. I never met him, but um, when I was in San Jose, but uh, he, he's quite a character. He uh, he was in Belize. I think he was. I think the tax authorities were after him. But the company that he founded has done very well, and it's up today, 46 cents, about 1.8 percent. Um, it it uh, you know it, it, would I buy this company? Well, their last buy point on this was back uh, on the consolidation basis, about 1978. This was spun off 
from Symantec. Um, I, I guess I, I guess the way it was, it was bought by Symantec. Symantec was bought by Intel. Intel spun them. Who knows? I mean, it was just it's a lot of people. There's a lot of uh, cooks in the in the uh, kitchen on this one. Uh, it's just been around. Uh, it's 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 uh, basically been around. Um, you know, it, it's 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 an IPO. It's looking very good. Uh, it's a great product. Everyone's heard of it. Uh, it's up three percent today. It it, uh, it it and and the sales are up fourteen percent. So, you know, I do not see you know why you couldn't you couldn't own this one. Uh, it's it's the kind of it's the kind of thing. Uh, means you know, security software is going to be with us. It's a good area, even though this area of the market uh, has been pulling back as late as one thirty seven out of. 197 in terms of its its ranking, I I just see I, I just see this as an evergreen area, that's just gonna do well forever because you know there's gonna be fraudsters and there's <laughs> there's gonna be all that kind of stuff. So I think this is uh, I think this is a good stock, uh, G I really do. And um, you know can you get it at this point? Yeah. Well, it is it is trading on the 20 uh, the 21 day line. You could buy it at this point. It's a little extended for me. I probably would wait until it rebases, but then again, you might not get a chance because it just seems like it's moving right up. So, very nice stock, uh, very good area. What is a good semiconductor equipment play? And uh, they all seem short in the semis. Um, yeah, I think you're right, uh, Mark. Um, the semis are really a tough area. I want to look at one that I was playing last year that I really liked. Uh, it's called Form Factor, F O R M. It's a relatively small company in Fremont. California, but I, 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 it, it has, it has a really good chart, and this is the chart of uh, form factor. It's off a little bit. It's pulled back down to the twenty, uh, the uh, fifty-day average, but I, I still really like this one. They just continues. They just have good sales. They're moving up. They, their profits are good. Uh, you know, the, the checklist is good. Nobody. The only thing is, it's not really not that many people have heard of them. But it seems to be doing really well, uh, you know, and uh, it has good ownership. 488 funds are in it. It's primarily, uh, it's got about a 17% return on equity, and it does have positive cash flow. Uh, so these are these are things that are really hard to come by, uh, but this is a very, very good area. Uh, basically, they make wafer probe cards for DRAM, and, you know, this uh, with the new semiconductor cycle, this is likely to be a very good area. So this is one I would kind of put on my radar screen. It's a symbol F O R M, and I do kind of like it. Um, it's not necessarily the the biggest or the best, uh, you know, the most well known, but I do like this one, uh, form factor. Uh, Text Instruments is in focus. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, T X N is a sleeper. I, it's funny uh, where I'm broadcasting from is right down the street, literally, from one of their fabs. And uh, this this company is, you know, the granddaddy of them all, along with Intel. They basically invented the chip business. So, this is a, this is a, this is a serious company with serious products. Uh, off a little bit after ours. This is just a great chart that that TXN has. This has been, while well, everybody has been jumping up and down, this one has just been sli- slowly moving up, and it looks like they've turned the corner on sales. Their sales are up 22 percent quarter over quarter. Their profits, though, are up 61%. They're, they're starting to be in all the right areas. These guys kind of have been playing second banana for years to Intel um, based on the fact that they don't really, they, they got out of the processor business. But with their autonomous chips, their vision chips, they're really in a good position. So this is the one, that, uh, this is definitely one you want to look at. Very strong. Uh, along another one uh, is on semiconductor, but this, but but Texas Instruments, it's got the it, it it's it's got the mojo. It's uh, it definitely it has the fabs. It it has the it, it just it just it, it's a deep company and it's doing quite well right now. They've made a lot of very good um, acquisitions. In five days, they have earnings, so I may have an earnings plan this one. Uh, I'm thinking possibly of doing a bull spread on this one, just based on the fact that. Uh, it just it just seems to to move higher, and I do think that uh, you know they're in, all in the right places now. On Intel, I have a bear spread on it. I do think they're going to move lower, but uh, right now it seems like the momentum, at least in the chip sector, is moving more towards um, TXN. So this is a great good stock, and uh, again, earnings coming up. So if you're buying the physical shares, I'd be careful. 
of just buying the, the underlying shares right now because we're so close into earnings. It's, this is a really good candidate for a spread trade. And um, basically, I'm going to try to put that out to everybody that is on uh, the Discord room, uh, I'm, you know, it, it is on the Discord room. If you're interested in, you know, finding out more about that, of course, it's real easy to to get there. All you have to do is is go to www.vinnyvhinny.com slash u slash delustrating4. I put up the wrong one. Sorry about that. Let me see if I've got the right one there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I was talking to my programmers last night, and I've been I've been flashing the wrong signals here on some of this stuff, but. If you want to get on the Discord room, and, and this is where I kind of put out some of my spread plays, and it's access to me, of course, as well. It's www.vinnyvhinny.com slash u slash Dallas Trading Floor. So that's a way that's a way that you can you can do that. But uh, we're going into a nice earnings season, uh, and TXN will be uh, in the earnings hunt. All right, so this is. Well, then TXN, and they're, you know, they're, yeah, okay, <laughs> Biden, <is, laughs> I, I wish I, I wish I disagreed with you on that, I wish I did, I wish I did, unfortunately, I don't, I don't disagree with you, you know, uh, people need to trade stock, you know, I don't say necessarily need to trade stock, but, you know, trading your money in your 401k, you know, makes for a good middle class, and I think, I think, I, I think I, I think uh, hurting people is just it's not it's not good. But anyways, whatever. <laughs> you can't you can't uh, <laughs> you can't fight it. Unfortunately, let's look at X S O X I um, S O X I. Um, well, oh, 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 unfortunately, I didn't get that one. So let me see what the next one is. Oh, Tesla. Yeah, all in. Here's the thing. I, I, I have to caution everybody on Tesla. I love Tesla. As you know, I'm a Tesla bull, and I have been one for a long time. But here's the problem that I'm seeing right now in Tesla. And it's not a problem with Tesla, okay? I, I want to be clear on that. It's not a problem with Tesla stock. I do believe electric vehicles are the future, and Tesla is right out in front. But there is some concern that I have on this chart, and I want to show it to you. We have what they call overhead supply, and this, that's all the people that bought at these high levels, above 800. There's a lot of people that bought above 800. Now, they're still holding it, and they're waiting for it to come back. So, so the minute we start to get towards 800, many of these people are going to sell, okay? And that's what they call overhead supply. There's a problem right now with, with um, Tesla in that it has a lot of overhead supply. So I think we need some, I, need to, I think we need to create a base here again. Uh, before we see, before we see an opportunity. So here's the thing, and this is tough to do, because I so want to get in and start buying Tesla with both hands. I do have a spread on Tesla. I have a bear, I have a bull spread on Tesla, but it's a very wimpy one. I mean, it's really wimpy. Uh, it's a really wimpy one. But what I think is Tesla, at least for the time being, is going to be trading, you know, from about there to there in that range. Uh, so here's the thing, we've got, we, you know. We've got to wait again for a time when Tesla is going to come come right. But what's going to happen is eventually we're going to get this cup formation come up to about 800 line here. It's going to handle down, and it's going to form a beautiful cup with handle. But but we have to wait. We may be waiting on this one possibly through summer. So right now it's just it was like Apple. We waited and waited and waited on Apple, and then finally Apple started moving higher. And breaking out. I think that's the case with Tesla. So right now, long story short, I can't really, um, I, I, I haven't given up on Tesla. I just think you've got to wait on Tesla because of this overhead supply. But once that's taken care of, you know, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be off to the races. So I cannot say all in on Tesla. I would love to do that, but I can't do it right now, unfortunately, just because of that overhead supply. Let's look at CXW. Thank you very much um, for top notch. 260. That's cool. I like that. I like that handle. Uh, let's look at uh, CXW. And CXW is uh, oh, Course Civic. I don't know this one. It's a REIT. Okay. Uh, Federal and State Detention Centers. You know what? I don't think this one. This actually they might do well because you know there's going to be a lot of issues uh, with immigration. But I, I just I don't like this area that much. Um, I think there's just a lot of uh, outcry against it. I think we're going to see a disinvestment in this sector. So certain other companies that are in this area, like Wackenhut, uh, 
Uh, I think you just got to be super careful. In this. I would not recommend this sector top notch. Uh, it's a good idea, but I, just, I, I think I think you could get burned in this one. Um, be, be, be earned, burned in this one, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I could say differently. But yeah, well, he's gonna. He's, uh, you're you're right about that mega how to man. We by May may invert inadvertently crash the market. I think that's. I think I think that you think you're right. Unfortunately, I wish. I wish. I wish that wasn't the case. But you know, hey, I'm not a politician. I'm just reporting. Um, let's look at Neo. Uh, and you know, Neo, of course, it trades in sympathy with with um, with Tesla. The interesting thing about Neo, I. Um, uh, Neo and Ford have, I think they have a deal. I, again, I just don't know if they have a deal. Um, but right now, it did break above. It, it did look like it's making a reversal. You're absolutely right. I have my reversal line on here for everyone that's that's looking on TikTok. Maybe you want to jump over to uh, YouTube because I can actually show it to you. Right now, I can only show you. I can't show you behind uh, on the screen uh, on TikTok, unfortunately, I've got to try to figure out how to do that, but right now I can't. So I got to do that on YouTube. It's at youtubecom trading 4 is where I'm broadcasting. But anyways, there was a reversal, but I just think you've got to wait on this one. I think you have to wait on this one. Uh, it does look like it is heading up, but I just I'm not. Here's the thing. I want to see it come up, and I'm going to reactivate this this one here. I want to see it come up and and go beyond the 50-day moving average. Before I before I can say we're kind of an all clear on, on Neo, I like Neo. I've done well with Neo, but it's got earnings in seven days. I don't think this is a true reversal, so I think I think you just got to be careful. Unfortunately, uh, I wish I could give an all clear to buy it, but I, I can't right now. Unfortunately, uh, T I S I. Let's look at T I S I. Interesting, T I S I. And that is Team. And uh, interesting, okay, interesting for high temperature piping systems. This is the kind of real economy stocks that you know are interesting. I'm not familiar with this one. Uh, it's a relatively low volume stock. It's only trades 213,500 shares a day, which isn't a lot. Uh, by the way, I'm going to be putting out after the show, um, you know, later after the show, and after my uh, Discord uh, room. Uh, I'm probably going to be putting out tonight a list of high quality under ten dollar stocks, but that's and that's available if you are signed up on uh, on the X trade list. This is totally free, by the way. This this one's actually totally free, so you don't have to worry about this one. And here in a second, it should pop up on the screen. Hopefully, when when I get some bandwidth, there we go. And uh, basically, so su subscribe to free action trade alerts, and it's easy to do. You just go to um, that's subscribed for the <laughs> to to Dallas Trading Floor, but just go to DallasTradingFloor.com, and then I need the first and last name, and uh, that 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 uh, website is being uh, reconstructed, but it it'll get through to me, first and last name and email address, and we'll get it out there. These are going to be the ten um, the under ten dollar high, highly rated stocks. We're going to come out with that probably tonight or tomorrow. So. Uh, that can be a really good thing too. Uh, I, I've found some very, very good stocks on that: retractable technologies, RVP, and um, Blink Charging, and I've done very well with them. So uh, that's kind of that's kind of the incubator. Sometimes we see some really good stuff coming in in that area. Um, okay, push your limits. I like that one too. Uh, Roblox, RBLX, and. Uh, you know, I I have not been in this one. I'll be honest with you. People have done well in this one. I I don't think it's the time for this one. Um, I I just I don't think it's time time for this one. It just uh, it's just not looking. It's just not setting up right. This is the daily chart on it. It it's a basically an IPO. Uh, and as you can see, it's, there's really there was a buy point on a on an IPO base at 79.10. It's currently 69.88, and it's up a little bit after hours. But I just uh, I'm a little bit leery on this one. I just don't. I just don't like this one enough. I want to see it move higher, and and firm up. So that's kind of my that's kind of my opinion. Push your limits really is on Roblox. I think I don't think you can trade it at this moment. So you got to be careful. Um, boy, and I and I haven't given too many really good, um, really good uh, stuff here. So, um, uh, what is the balance point? Oh, is balance good? Uh, Rocket Mortgage. Beyond me, okay. Um, let's look at one that I want to kind of look at here. Uh, it might be—it's called Gush. It's—it's it's actually an ETF, 
and I want to see how it's doing because there's been a lot of movement into the oil and gas area and it is doing horrible so it's not this is not a good idea but it did have a little bit of an action yeah it had a, <laughs> it had a little bit of an action but it's not Bible I just wanted to look at that one to see kind of how it was doing so it was a, it was a good it was a good thought but it wasn't really a good idea uh, <laughs> Okay, um, I'm almost at the end of the hour, unfortunately. I could do this for hours and hours. Let's look at TPL. This is Texas Pacific Land. This is the number, this is a, uh, this, it's interesting because I know some people over there. I have, I know the landmen over there. It's, it's kind of interesting that you mentioned it. It's, it's here in Dallas. Uh, TPL is the remnants of, a, of a, uh, the old Texas Pacific Railroad. And uh, in, in Texas, that's why they call the, the commission that handles oil and gas the Railroad Commission, even though it has nothing to do with railroads anymore. But TPL is is stellar. <laughs> Look at this chart. <laughs> it's only after hours it's trading. One share of this of, of this bad boy trades for fourteen hundred and seventy dollars. <laughs> it's probably uh, I don't know if it's worth it or not. The sales are going down, but this is a royalty trust. So basically. What they're looking at here is this is just this is just return on equity. If you want to plant your money somewhere and make money, <laughs> this is a good place because the return on the equity on TPL is averaging 35%. There's there's very few things in the market that I've ever heard of that have this kind of return. Now, is it going to continue on this on this move upward? Well, as this gets more discovered, I think there's likely to. Uh, this is a very strange stock. I'm not saying that I would buy it, uh, but it's got a relative strength of 96, and it, it's just all it is. All Texas Pacific is is it's just producing oil wells, and if the price of oil is going up, you know this is the kind of stock you want to own, at least a few shares in, because I, I wouldn't recommend buying 100 shares in this. But if you own in this, you're going to get a return of 35%, which is which is stellar considering the average passbook savings account in this country less, uses less than a tenth of a percent. So this one is a very interesting play. Uh, it is number one. I don't know how long it's going to stay that way. This is the number one this is the number one group of all the 197 sectors and this is the number one play in the number one group. So currently it, going by that this is the number one of number one. It's got a uh, it, it's checklist it, it, this really doesn't count because the check this is because basically this is not really an operating company. This is just a money collection device. That's really all it is. And uh, it's again, it's industry rank is number one. Uh, they actually have, uh, I, I think there's some funds in this. It's mostly very rich people that own this. 196, 196 funds are in it. Uh, the sector is, uh, again, this royalty trust. And uh, it's very interesting. I don't think there's any options on it. No, there's no options on it yet. This, this, is, this, is, kind of like, this is kind of like Berkshire Hathaway for the oil business. <laughs> so that's what this is. That's what this is. Thank you for bringing it up. It's a very interesting stock. And uh, it, it's if you're ever in Dallas, it's it's right here in Dallas uh, downtown. Uh, I don't they don't have that many people, but it's a very interesting company. Anyways, um, I have wasted probably another hour of your time. Um, you know we have these this great uh, Discord room, and I think I have like eh, 20 more coupons I guess for the reduced price on it. Anyways, uh, it's available if you if you want to take a look at that. Just kind of you know if you're interested in this and. Uh, you know, have a little bit more direct access with spreads and that kind of thing that I send out before I send out everything. And, and you can basically uh, get that by, you know, taking a look. It's, it's venny.com slash u slash Dallas Trading Floor. And I'm going to put that up on the screen here again if I get it right. I give you, I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to give you the, you know, sometimes I give you the wrong information. And that's, that's painful uh, for me, but... Uh, I was talking with the tech people last night, and they saying I was giving out the wrong address. So it's www.vinny.com slash u slash Dallas Trading Floor. Until tomorrow, uh, we'll be back. Uh, we're going to have the results of the sp two spread trades that I made uh, on for the Discord people. That's on Intel. That's a bear spread on Intel and also a bear spread on United Airlines. We'll see how we, well we do on those. Uh, back tomorrow at 2.30 Central. 3.30 Eastern. Thanks again. Uh, tell your friends and, um, and uh, happy trading.